so loved the world. Hello and welcome to the 10th anniversary of A Worship in Pink. We are very excited that you are joining us during this unprecedented time as we hold our first virtual Worship in Pink event. My name is Andrew Asado, and I have the pleasure of serving as the CEO of Susan G. Komen, Oregon in Southwest Washington. You know, the goal of Worship in Pink has always been to educate our faith-based community on the importance of screening in the early detection of breast cancer. While we're not able to gather in person this year as we would like, we look forward to celebrating Worship in Pink's 10th anniversary with you and your congregation and fellowship. Now, please join me in welcoming Kathy Kendricks, our wonderful Worship in Pink program planner, who will guide us through today's program. Good morning, church, giving honor and praise to God. In 2011, the vision of Worship in Pink was shared with pastors at the first clergy breakfast in the Legacy Emanuel Atrium. We recruited churches to hold activities with their congregations during a weekend in October. Centered on the importance of screening in the early detection of breast cancer. Over the years, Worship in Pink has expanded to fill the entire month of October. We provide Worship in Pink partner churches with breast health education materials and training for volunteer ambassadors to share the main message of early detection saves lives. While we can't be together this year, we're positive that you'll enjoy today's speakers. First, I'd like to introduce Ty Harden Moore, the African American Initiative and DEI Manager at Susan G. Coleman, Oregon and Southwest Washington to share her story of living with metastatic breast cancer. My breast cancer journey began when at 31 years old, I was diagnosed with stage three inflammatory breast cancer. I was devastated by my diagnosis, but I found the strength to fight through 18 grueling rounds of chemotherapy, a bilateral mastectomy, and six and a half weeks of five day a week radiation. Cancer made me physically weak, but at the same time, it gave me a strength I didn't even know I had. As I progressed through treatment, I began sharing my story and quickly realized that I was not alone. There were too many women, particularly African-American women, just like me, who had to fight to get a proper diagnosis because they were too young to have breast cancer. There were too many women out there who were afraid to burden their families with their diagnosis, so they kept it a secret. There were too many women who didn't seek treatment at all because of the financial burden it would put on them and their family. So I continue to share my story and encourage others to share theirs as well, and to be diligent about their breast health, and most importantly, to be their own best advocate and to ask for what they needed as they moved through their personal breast cancer journey and not to stop until they got the support that they needed to get through it. Six years later, cancer showed up again. This time it was stage four metastatic breast cancer in my lungs. I was 37. Research suggests that the life expectancy for someone with stage four metastatic breast cancer is one and a half to two years. As I researched and read through those statistics, I decided two things. One, those statistics would not apply to me because I had too much living to do. And two, it was time to take action. One of the major ways I took action was by becoming more involved in Coleman Oregon's African American Initiative. The aim of the African American Initiative is to address disparities among African American women, particularly around screening rates, mortality rates, and late stage diagnosis. This initiative is so important to our community because despite similar screening rates, Black women are 40% more likely to die from breast cancer than white women. As Coleman's African American Initiative Manager, I am working with our community and our health systems to collect data and identify the interventions needed to address these disparities and save the lives of black women. 
and Worship in Pink is an invaluable part of that work. So thank you to our Worship in Pink ambassadors for all you do to educate and bring awareness to this issue and talk about breast cancer in our community. The work that you do helps to save lives. Thank you. Thank you, Ty. Now, I'd like to introduce Dr. Natalie Johnson, a breast surgical oncologist at Legacy Health to talk about the importance of screening in the early detection of breast cancer. Good morning or good afternoon, whatever time of day it is, as you're beginning to watch our Worship in Pink. I wanna thank you for participating. I was asked to talk about screening and we've done that a lot. And I think in context for African-American women, surviving breast cancer is so much more than just screening alone. We realize that there are lots of areas that we can improve and lots of work that needs to be done. And so I am so full and so grateful that Coleman is undertaking this special initiative for African-American women. So we want to talk about screening and early detection, but we also want to talk about what happens after that into treatment. So um, the College of Radiology in 2018 updated screening recommendations for African-American women specifically. I think we've all heard of screening, you know, it used to be you started age 40, then um, the U.S. Preventative Task Force moved it to age 50. There was a lot of debate and the American Cancer Society finally came out with a recommendation for women to begin screening at age 45. But for African-American women, actually, it turns out that that's a problem because we tend to get breast cancer at far earlier ages. And this is what the American College of Radiology came out with a statement about. So the leading cause of death for African-American and actually Latina women between the ages of 45 and 60 is breast cancer. It turns out that many more African-American women are diagnosed with breast cancer in their 30s. So if you wait till 40 to begin screening, that's a problem. So the American College of Radiology is now recommending that African-American women at age 30 have a risk assessment. And by risk assessment, we mean asking questions about family history and other things that play a role in increasing risk. Another interesting fact is white women, it's a risk, risk factor for them to have children at a later age and they lower their risk of breast cancer if they have their children at a young age. And it's actually the, the reverse for black women. So if you have children at a very young age, that actually increases your risk of breast cancer. So taking all those things into consideration, then you make a decision about whether a black woman should begin screening at age 30. The other interesting thing about black women is we tend to have a more aggressive form of breast cancer called triple negative. This is tied into a genetic risk or an inherited risk so that you get this from your family. And when BRCA1 and BRCA2, which are genetically inherited, um, risk uh, mutations that increase your risk for breast and ovarian cancer, and actually pancreatic cancer as well, were described, they were described to be much higher in Ashkenazi Jewish women. But it turns out that African American women have those mutations or can carry them as much or more than uh, Jewish women. Part of the reason we're just learning that is inequities in genetic testing. So African American women, Black women haven't been uh, doing genetic testing as widely as they should. So I think one of the things I want you to take away from today's message is that if you have family history of breast cancer, actually colon cancer, ovarian cancer, uterine cancers, um, prostate cancer, 
a any of that, if you have that in your family, you need to mention that to your primary care provider and ask about having genetic risk assessment and testing. Because if we know that you have those mutations, we begin to screen you earlier. We begin to screen not only with mammography, but also with breast MRI and sometimes more detailed ultrasounds. So that's a takeaway message is that black women get breast cancer at a younger age. And so if you feel something abnormal, that's another reason to push the question of additional imaging, especially ultrasound and to have high risk testing. And I think Ty just talked about that and how important that is for us so that we can move the needle on being diagnosed at an earlier stage. We also know that black women, even stage for stage, um, die of breast cancer at a much higher rate. So if you get a, a breast cancer, you're 42% more likely to die of it than a white woman. Even if you control for insurance, for education, for socioeconomic status, for all of that, there's still a difference in outcome. So why is that? That's the next level that we have to look at. So there are lots of things that are being explored. Is it the more aggressive types of breast cancer that we have. But when you look at and control for that, it still seems to be that something else is at play. And one of the things that we're looking at is unconscious bias or implicit bias um, and working with our providers at all levels. So from the breast center to our surgeons, to our medical oncologists, to be self-reflective and to look at the way that we care for women of color and to ask ourselves, are we offering the same um, options? Uh, and how can we bridge that gap? So that's the next level, doing a deeper dive on those differences. Because I believe when within our lifetime that we can change the outcomes for black women and we can get them up so that we are on par. It takes all of us together. It takes a community to make those steps. So Komen and the African American Initiative is a great start. Getting screened and spreading the message on early screening and also the message on how African American women differ. Um, and getting that message and word out and educating, that's important. And then educating each other on how to bridge differences in the way we access or are given options for treatment. There's so much happening in 2020 around social justice and around equity and um, how things are in our society. I have every hope that as we move the needle in every other way in this country, we'll be moving the needle on breast cancer. And I hope that Portland and Southwest Washington will be a shining light. And I hope you'll indulge me a little bit because as I think about the struggles that we have gone through in the realm of breast and other cancers, I think about the disparities that we had many years ago when African American women were not getting screened at the same rates as white women. And now we're bridging that gap, we're getting there. And we're at now a level where we wanna take it even further so that we're looking at not only getting earlier detection, but also changing it so that our survival becomes more the same. And I heard a song that I wanna share with you and the bottom line of it is keep your eyes on the prize. And it came as part of the social movement um, that Blacks have been through in America. And some of you may recognize it and some of you may not, but I hope you'll, if you know it, sing along with me. Paul and Silas in the jail Got no money to pay their bail Keep your eyes on the prize and hold on, 
hold on. Well, one thing we did wrong is stay in the wilderness way too long. Keep your eyes on the prize and hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Keep your eyes on the prize and hold on. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Breast cancer is the most common cancer among all women. Breast cancer numbers for African-American women are disturbing in Oregon. African-American women have a higher rate of late stage diagnosis than their counterparts at 42% versus 27%. We believe this is unacceptable. With breast health education and awareness, all of us can make a difference to change these outcomes. Our Worship in Pink Passport to Breast Health is full of information, resources, and facts about breast cancer. We also have an online survey for Worshiping Pink participants to complete. Your Worshiping Pink ambassadors will send you the link. The data collected from the survey will be used by Komen to get a general idea of breast health and screening habits in the faith community. If you would like help getting a mammogram or health insurance, you can request help at the end of the survey and someone will contact you. Thank you to the pastor and the amazing ambassadors for hosting your 2020 virtual Worship in Pink Sunday. Thank you to Andrew Asato, Ty Harden Moore, and Dr. Natalie Johnson for spending time with us today. And a special thank you to Julianne Johnson Weiss and MAH Records for the introductory and closing music. And to the staff of Susan G. Coleman, Oregon and Southwest Washington for making this video possible. Remember, together we can make a difference with inspiration, education, and hope. May God bless. You just fail.